Have you ever wondered what really causes overfitting of a trading strategy? Do you know how to avoid it? Well, in this video, we're going to shed some light on this often misunderstood issue. If you perform optimizations of parameter values for your trading systems, then you will be overfitting to some degree. It's impossible not to. This is sometimes called over-optimization, and the amount of over-optimization is one of the factors that will determine whether your system is successful or not when you trade it in your live account. So let's take a closer look at this problem faces all of us because if you understand it better it means you'll be empowered to do something about it. Let's provide some context. Firstly, overfitting is a phenomenon that's completely unrelated to what we've studied so far in episodes one and two. Now you might have noticed that in those episodes I kept on referring to something I call the genuine edge of a trading system. And both simulation models that we studied had a genuine edge of, say, 10%. I know this was a genuine edge because I coded it in that way in the simulations. And so if you were to choose parameters with a genuine 10% edge, that's what you'd expect it to make on average in the long term if you traded it. But as soon as you start optimising real system parameters, something raises its ugly head the fake edge. And it's this fake edge that's the root of the problem of overfitting. But before I get into that, I first want to look at the industry standard definitions so that we all get the same grounding. Then I'll present my own individual view of how this manifests itself in the trading context. Now, let's say we have a relationship between two variables and some observed values like the ones you see here. Now remember why we build models. We build them based on past data so that we can then use them to predict future data. So if we observe a value for this component along the x-axis, we can predict what the value of the component on the y-axis will be. But our model needs to be generalised if it's going to have a chance of working and a generalised model is the opposite of an overfitted model. So to me, this looks like a fairly simple linear relationship between the x and the y values. And so the best generalised model for this is a straight line, something like this. So how good is this model at helping us to predict future values? Well, if we observe a value for x of, let's say, 5, And this tells us that the prediction for the y value is going to be somewhere between 6 and 7. Now there will be some error here. So the actual value might be somewhere here, which means that our error for the observation is, is here. Some errors will be large and some will be smaller. But regardless of this, the model of the linear relationship we've put in place will do a pretty good job of correctly predicting future values, so the model works. Now this can be modelled algebraically, as you'll already know, as y equals mx or c. And the important thing about this is that there are just two variables in this algebraic expression, m and c. Now what does an overfitted model look like? Well, it's something like this. Note how the model fits the past data really, really well. And these overfitted models tend to do that. But to model this algebraically, we need a lot more than just two parameters. So this relationship might be modeled something more like this.
So we have a polynomial expression where in this particular case, we have five variables that dictate the model, i, j, k, m, and c. This polynomial model allows us to fit to the past data much better than the linear model did. But is fitting to past data what we want our model to do? It's not what I want my models to do. The purpose of them for me is to predict future data. So how well does this overfitted model predict future data? Well, let's take a look. If we observe a value of, say, 2.5 on the x-axis, the prediction of the value of the y value is just a little over 5. But where are we likely to see this value? Well, it's more likely to be somewhere in this region here. And so in this particular case, the level of the error is much greater than it was with the linear model. So the outcome here is that this polynomial model does a very bad job of predicting compared to the simpler linear model. So what's the difference between these two? It's the number of parameters. And hopefully you see where I'm going with this. The number of parameters in your optimization determines how easy or otherwise it is to produce overfitted models. Okay, so if you've liked this part, please do like and share and then click here to start part 3.2, where I'll start to put this into the specific context of trading optimizations.